Okay, let's see if this is working. It's jumping on here early. Okay. Feed looks good. It's jumping on here early just to check everything, make sure that uh, everything's running okay. That should be good, and now let's uh, make sure we've got a mouse. Yep. All right, that seems to be working all right. Recording inactive. Yeah, we're not. Are we recording this? No, we're not. That's the go live button, but we've already gone live here, so we should. It's okay to go. Oh, hang on. No, we've got to. I think we've got to leave it unlisted. Yeah. Okay. Right. Should be ready to go in about 10 minutes. Uh, hopefully you won't hear my kids screaming in the background or anything like that. Might just, uh, might just mute the mic for, all right, we don't need you. Uh, right, I'll just mute for a second, but if anyone wants to say hi in chat, just to tell me that you're there, I can, Check on. Interesting. Interesting. It doesn't show me the amount of people who run. Okay. Maybe I should just test this chat. Works good. Yeah, that looked too bad. That looked too shabby. It's not as if I just got up out of bed or anything. So, right. Uh -huh. I'll just, I'll just turn you off for a second. And okay, that's working.
Ah, I didn't do the little countdown thing at the beginning. Wes is going to fire me, I think. All right. Ah, yes, caffeinate. Definitely need that. Right, so I'm just going to quickly test out what we're doing here. That's the test template. this desert monster okay we've got a palette awesome we've got pencils yes check let's start by with our template file Right. Interesting that it doesn't show me how many people are on in my stats. Recording and active. Is there any group? Group? I don't think I need to record this. Okay. Have we got an extra view? We should have. Okay, so if anyone wants to just say hi, tell me that you're in there. Um, I'm gonna be ready to go in about five minutes. Okay, so we'll just mute again for a second.
Alrighty. I'm just about to start. Okay, so I'm just making sure that... Lock your wrist for a second, I'm just going to check my mic. Okay, hopefully. Hopefully I'm not too loud. Hi, welcome John. Um, just let me know if I'm too loud or too soft or distorted or anything so I can just sort of check some settings. Or if there's... There uh, shouldn't be any echo because, well, I'm not making any screen noises. Uh, I'm going to put my coffee... See, I'm left-handed, so... <laughs> uh, excellent. Excellent. Thanks. <laughs> Alrighty. So what, what, what time have we got? About a minute, and then we'll get... Uh, get started I think I uh, I completely forgot at the last minute in all my rushing to get second monitor up file reading all that I forgot to do our little intro sting hi Camilla <laughs> okay I won't chat a CG cookie so that's just amber cool okay may as well uh, May as well get started, hey? <laughs> hey, everyone. Okay, so what are we doing today? Um, well, what I'm going to be doing is I have to design a new monster for each sheet uh, so that it appears in my upcoming course called Panels, which is going to be um, an eight-page comic. That's a good question. It's about 8 a.m. here, so... Um, yeah, hopefully the kids getting ready for school won't be too loud and uh, <laughs> and I'll be able to just sort of focus uh, straight ahead and, and give you guys a good insight into my process uh, today. Um, yeah, managed to get this little screen thing. You can, yeah, it's all good. How about we start drawing or something, huh? So yeah, this, this is just something that I've put together, uh, not just for a fancy th thumbnail. This is basically um, a few quick concepts that I put up uh, that I can just mix and match uh, to try out on some uh, monster designs. And so I'm just going to go straight from scratch. I'm going to create a new uh, grease pencil object and just sort of put this to the side sort of as my reference sheet. I did this because, you know, uh, it's always a little bit problematic, you know, sort of bringing up Google image search and stuff like that, um, which is what I normally do. And sort of in the privacy of your own um, uh, process, it's fine to reference images from wherever, but this is a live stream, it's on someone else's IP and all that sort of stuff. So uh, I can't really do that. So the ideas that I've got here are various eyes, skin, um, sort of head spikes, that sort of stuff. And the whole concept behind this is to take something that could be like a desert creature. And I was looking at some Australian animals, obviously. Um, you know, some, some lizards and, and I, I don't know if they're called dragons or whatever, but um, they, they've often got a lot of spikes, a lot of stuff that looks like stone. And so those are my inspirations. Midjourney. <laughs> yes, let's watch Paul uh, use Midjourney for now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that would be some really exciting watching right there. I'm a little old school. Uh, so, all right, so may as well start. I've got this little collection here and my template file. So I'm going to go ahead and create, shift A, a new blank grease pencil object. I'm going to go in front view here. And uh, if it helps any, I might put this grid up. Um, just for the moment, uh, yeah, okay, cool. And we will move this off to the side. So just going in here for a second, uh, we can just sort of move this off to the side out of our field of view, but so that we can sort of look at right now, everything already has, um, I've already created a template, uh, sorry, a, a palette, a color palette. 
with some basic colors, but we may need to add some as we go. Uh, and normally I take something like uh, this template here and I just start drawing over it. But uh, for the purposes of the demonstration, I'm just gonna redraw this shape or you know what? Why don't we copy that shape? <laughs> Let's see, here we go. It's on this layer here called pencil one. There we go. I'll just go into edit mode and I'll just do a quick lasso select, control C to copy. And let's go over to our new grease pencil object and we can call this desert monster uh, concept. Let's do that. Uh, okay, and I'm gonna call this layer pencils. Do we have all the materials we need? Well, we've got the straight black, we've got the graphite pencil, that's from the uh, drawing pencils. I'm gonna add one more from my list here, which is a solid fill, because we often wanna fill in some shapes as well. So all my materials are taken care of. We've got a pencils layer, we're good to go. So I'm gonna go into edit mode here, control V, and there's our basic shape. We may as well look through the camera because this will give us an idea of where he stands. Okay, so let's uh, let's grab this monster. Let's move him. We've got onion skinning on or something. Oh, interesting. Interesting. Why did it duplicate this? Maybe there was two. Okay, that's good. Right, so may as well, okay, I'm gonna scale from the 3D cursor here. So we're nice and big. All right, so that's our basic pencils. All right, and I'm just gonna turn off my grid floor for the time being, or should, would the floor be handy? Maybe the floor's handy because it gives us an idea of where the, the ground plane is. So let's see here. Right, so that's my, that's my pencils sketch template. Um, I'm just gonna do a refine layer now. Uh, let's call this pencils refined. All right, I'm gonna lock off my first pencil shot. Just working in pencils refined in draw mode and my um, I know this is the toolbox on the left-hand side. That's with the T key, and N brings up, well, it's a toolbox as well. <laughs> but this is basically my um, pencil settings that I can see here, and I've pre-made this uh, palette here with some uh, colors that we're going to use. I'm just going to drop the opacity of this pencil layer a little bit. Pencil refined. I'll just make sure that I'm drawing from, let's see, stroke. I mean, 3D Origin should do fine. I'm gonna go stroke, maybe just 3D cursor. Now let's just check that. Because if you don't draw from the right pivot point, you could end up with a bit of a mess, but there's ways of, of fixing that. I think it's just like reproject strokes or something like that. Anyway. Why don't we get to some drawing here? And um, I might start with pencil blue, if you can see that. Or uh, the, the red does tend to show up a little better. Ah, my red pencil color, it's gone. Okay, it's about there, but look, you know what? It's probably best if I do draw with a black pencil, just because you can see it a little better, a little bit more clearly. And we can begin to sketch in an outline. This radius needs to be a little bit fatter, I think. And if we go into this mode, we should be able to see it better. Right. And uh, so then the next part of my process is to basically take a look at some of these and then choose some. So. These are kind of chameleon eyes. These eyes might be a easier read. These are sort of like a, 
I kind of like these because they're a bit more lizardy. And so he'd end up looking a bit like this. Although this one is kind of nice. I might start with these plain ones because they've got lids. Um, and so let's see, uh, we've got to have an eye here and eye there. All right. And of course he's going to need some teeth as well. So I'm going to draw in a few little teeth. There we go. And we'll put in these, these eyelids, sort of tidy type of eyes with these lids here. Maybe he can be looking at us. There we go. All right. Now, um, Now this is basically Melvin's shape, if you're familiar with the Eat Sheep universe. <laughs> and part of the brief is to stick to that shape. It was a design decision that grew out of uh, the, the game in which they just wanted to use um, a single rig. It was a sort of a, a game economics thing, right? So with a single rig, you sort of divide, uh, design your monsters on a similar template, and then the rig should work with all the monsters. So here, I'm just going to draw these uh, these fingers here, and we've got a thumb on this side, got these plain feet, right? And so this is our our base to begin with. All right. And now I was partial to these horns here because they, they're a little bit more exciting than just these plain ones, these spikes or bits like that. And, uh, you know, they can sort of sit between the eyes and sort of give the monster a little bit more of a an attitude. Now, if I go with my straight erase, which I generally set to erase stroke, what that's going to do is erase that entire stroke. So I'm going to undo that. I'm going to go to erase point, and this actually allows us to erase just the, the bits that we don't want to see. Right? And it sort of allows us to draw a little bit more naturally. Now, with this one, this horn here, I'll disappear behind the head at some point. go. Yep. All right. I sort of want this to go back almost like a bit of a mohawk type thing. His plain eyes are working all right for now. Um, and then in terms of skin, I do like this kind of a rocky pattern rather than this sort of frog style um, just sort of blotches and I did this little <laughs> little tiger stripe thing just for some variation but um, yeah by putting uh, this sort of uh, patterning you could sort of imagine him uh, curling up into a ball and disguising himself in the desert you know which is what we'd want. Now, these are his forearms, and this part would sort of show up, I guess. All right, and so at this point, sort of taking ideas from the various ideas that I've already pre-made, and just mixing and matching, picking and choosing. Now, one thing I want to do is, uh, I. I like how some, some creatures in the desert, they sort of have a soft underbelly, but there's always a part where the rough top skin or the armored skin meets. And I don't want a clear delineation. I want something where the the skin, the this sort of crackle pattern, kind of eats into the line so it's a little um, more interesting. And so I'll just... 
I'll just sketch these very briefly in here, but obviously it's not going to be exactly like that. I'm, I'm, I'm going to be um, working this pattern in more, as you see here, right, just based on, on two tones. So this won't be, this won't have outlines. Um, although, sort of thinking about it, some outlining or some shading on that could give the impression that these are more raised bumps rather than just sort of a, a flat pattern on the skin. And, and that's something we can work with as well. Sorry, just <laughs> still on the coffee uh, for now. Uh, all right. So obviously we've got um, some patterns here that we got to get. All right, about 15 minutes in. Great. All right. I'm liking the look of him from the front. And we're definitely going to need something for the back. So what I might quickly do is go into edit mode. Scale X. Oh, no, let's just do medium point. Scale X. Right. And then we'll just uh, fudge this. <laughs> we'll fudge this so that it looks more like the monster from behind. So we just sort of need the silhouette. Alright, so the silhouette will match. And. Actually, if we do this, if we go pencil red and we go boom, okay, so there, there's our red color. Okay, pencil red is back. What we could do is make another pencil in black, maybe, or we just add this to our palette. So we've got the pencil, the pencil red, uh, and just in case. The pencil blue. Okay, so now that they're added to our palette. So I'll just keep the pencil red here for now. Right, and so if this was the mouth side, right, and uh, this was the monster from behind, sort of have a little monstery butt, I guess. Shoulders. Um, And these claws would be apparent more on here. Just sort of checking the chat every now and then if you, you guys are still around. Just, uh, yep. Or if you're just joining, hi. <laughs> We're drawing monsters today. More specifically, a desert monster for an upcoming uh, tutorial series called Panels. That would be correct. The thumb would be more on that side and hidden behind this. So, right, so these are the back. This is his back. Great. And so now I can go back to my refines. Yeah, he's not looking great, but maybe we can do a better job on the refined layer. So I'm going to drop the opacity here again for these lines. And maybe just... Uh, whoop. take a little bit of an artistic license so that we can see. So he'd, he'd have some back muscles here. Sort of have a, a butt. Legs should look a little different from behind. <laughs> Yeah, it's a, it's a good cheat, and especially if you're doing concept work, uh, flipping is is something that I'm always doing uh, because everyone sort of has a drawing bias. Like, if you've ever looked at your artwork on paper and then just sort of like turned it around and put it on the light table or something, it looks really odd uh, because we're used to sort of drawing one way, and that flipping is important because um, 
what you can do is then sort of correct for your bias. You could go, okay, that looks a little weird. Um, I'm going to correct this hand or move this eye over or, or fix this nose or whatever. And that allows you to get a more uh, balanced looking design, uh, basically. Right, so let's see now. Okay, so we've got this, this head here. And we'd be seeing these spikes, uh, sort of, this is in front, obviously, and then there'd be another one behind, and another one behind that. And so maybe we'd sort of peter them out I'll zoom in so you guys can see a little bit more clearly. So for, for me, this is drawing very large. <laughs> I tend to be like a very small drawer. Um, what does the use lights option do in the properties editor? That's a good question. Um, what use lights does, I can quickly answer this. It does this. I'll just select this template file and all of these layers have got use lights on them, right? Uh, and the one that it's going to show the best on is the fills. Right. Yeah, actually, what we'll do, this masks one does have a fill. So what we'll do is we'll disable use lights on the mask, but we'll have them on for the fills, which are all of these colored things here. Now, I'm just going to swing into... 3D view. Everyone always gets amazed, especially if they're coming from Photoshop or something like that. Sorry, am I even allowed to say the P word? I don't know. Um, but <laughs> uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a light. I'll just make it a point light because it's very easy uh, to, to use. I'm just going to grab that and move this over. Now I'm in uh, viewport shading rendered and I'm going to move this light close to these shaded objects. I'm just going to move this back. Now, uh, I might need to bump up the, um, what's it called? The, 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 uh, power. It's right there. Right there. It says power, Paul. You can read and, and find. Okay. And what this does is it allows you to illuminate your grease pencil object with a light, right? And, um, but because this mask layer, we'll just go back to our grease pencil. This one does not have use lights. If I then grab this light and bring it near the mask, you'll see that it affects the sketch layer, right? Which has use light, but it doesn't affect the mask layer. And so basically use lights is on by default and it allows you to do some really cool effects with Grease Pencil. Um, if you're integrating Grease Pencil into, say, a, a scene with a lot of 3D objects, it's a way to light the Grease Pencil object and integrate it more into that 3D scene. I tend to use it um, for some clever, like, airbrushing ideas. So if I'm just solely working uh, in 2D, I'll place a few lights around Okay, so let's say we, we place this light up here and we give this light uh, a color, like a bit more reddish, purplish color, right? I will just go into front view so we can see it, right? Uh, this now can create some interesting color variations and the, the power of the light and uh, all that can be fixed. So that's, I'm hoping that answers the question. <laughs> Hi, best Korean Jesus. <laughs> welcome. Uh, are you welcome? Uh, yay. All right. Uh, yeah, if you catch this later, that'll be really cool. Okay, so back to our, oh uh, boy, my defaults. Back to our sketch. Yeah, he's looking a bit wonky here. Was there another question actually? Where is the use light option? Ah, okay, well, let's... <laughs> I'm back in draw mode, okay? On any of these layers, right, the, the layers here under your grease pencil object data properties, as soon as you select a layer, 
underneath, you can choose the blend mode, the opacity, right? So it can, you can play with that and then use lights. By default, it's ticked, so it's enabled. As soon as you put lights on the scene, it's gonna interact with your grease pencil. Uh, but you can untick it in case you have some stuff that you don't want illuminated. Um, I, off the top of my head, I'm not entirely sure. Like, let's say you want some really dark inks that aren't illuminated, but your colors and your shading, you want those illuminated, you would disable use lights on your inks layer, for instance, and just enable them on the other stuff. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, so that should, uh, <laughs> that should clarify that question. All right, so let's just get back to drawing the features of this monster. All right, so obviously we're going to be creating more of this crackly rock. And he won't have it on his palms, but on his shoulders. Right, on his back. In the grease pencil data properties after you select it. Yep, okay. <laughs> right. Uh, he's missing some claws. And I had some options here between no claws, really stubby, cute fingernails. These blunt nails were more for like digging. So you can imagine that this creature is more about, you know, oh, if he has to hide, he'll sort of dig a hole. And so he has sort of spade type nails. And these are more predatory claws. In the Eat Sheep universe, I guess anything goes. Um, <laughs> so I, I'm more partial to these digging ones. Uh, they've got sharp teeth and so the sharp claws would make sense, especially with the horns. I'm a bit torn because I like to put in a lot of different... Does, does anyone have a preference? Maybe I'll throw it over to you guys. Should I go with the sharp uh, pointed claws, which will make him look a little bit more menacing? Um, I, I liked the spade ones because they have a different purpose to the, you know, eating of sheep. Uh, but they do have a different purpose you know, evolutionarily, like um, for hiding themselves or something like that. Um, not sure. Torn on that one, so I'll just keep drawing. If someone does have a preference, uh, just put it in the chat and uh, I might go with it. Right. In the meantime, why don't we jump onto the next step, which is a, a bit of fun. Uh, I'm just going to have to fix this line because in... Uh, Let's check here. Okay. Right. So now what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm going to create a mask layer. I found this a lot more beneficial than just going with straight colors. And what a mask layer does is allows me to create an area that I can then use and do things like shading and not really worry about coloring outside the lines and it's a lot faster so it's a bit of a hack it's a give and take once you've got a mask down uh, you can add or remove shading as you want and so for me it's a time-saving device but it does um uh, in the long run say uh, yeah like it does add an extra layer and all that sorry i was just sort of reading here uh difference between box sharpen and diamond sharpen Where's that? Box sharpen and diamond sharpen. Is that a... Okay, I'll have to get back to you on that one. <laughs> Just waving me this change. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna add a layer here and uh, make my mask. I'm gonna call this mask. And uh, we may work with one of the colors that we could use, just in case it shows through or something like that. And uh, normally, I would do this on inks that are nice and closed and uh, and everything, and then just do like a bucket fill set to reverse, right? Because you've got a plus and you've got a minus. It's also here um, in your brush settings, right? Normal and inverted. 
the inverted bucket fill, if I select that, and I click on that, it's a node. Okay, well, uh, I won't get into nodes specifically in this live stream, probably, but I'll, I'll take a look at that, and possibly in the next live stream, I'm going to see um, if there's a really good way to apply it to, to Grease Pencil here. Uh, so back at um, Fill, by putting it on minus or inverted, if I then click here, I'm not going to because it'll crash Blender, unfortunately, um, it fills everything on the inverse of what you touch naturally. And so if you're on a link ink layer, it would fill in these two outlines. So that's a really neat way of getting a fill in. But what I tend to do, uh, just because I'm lazy and I come from a 2D background, I guess, um, with my mask, I'm going to set my material to solid. And uh, I'll just shut down these brush settings and I'm on this color here. And I'm just going to draw an outline around our monster, nice and rough. Because this is a concept sketch, we can be rough, but uh, I won't be too bad. And we can always just refine this a little more once it is drawn. And by refining, I mean we can go into edit mode. And I like to have my proportional editing tool uh, connected only. Won't be necessary because I've only got one thing, but it's, it's sort of good to have on. And then with my proportional editing tool, I'm just going to middle mouse scroll. Where's my circle? There's my circle, right? And that way I can just sort of move a couple of these po points into a better position, but I won't sort of spend too much time on this. Okay, we're about halfway through the stream, I believe. Ah, thank you, Amber. Amber's just placed a link there for the, um, the box sharp increases the contrast, especially at the edge. Oh, oh yes, okay. Oh, I think I know what you're talking about there. Uh, it's, it's something that I don't use a lot. I'm sorry, I don't want to sound like a hack. <laughs> You've stumped me there. So I'm going to plead, I don't know, <laughs> but I will look into that and see if it's something that uh, I, I could use more often. All right. So now with that mask done, because this was flipped, uh, I'm just going to shift D, scale in the X direction, negative one, move this over. And it won't be exactly correct because we did fudge a couple of things, but it's easier than drawing it again. Isn't it? All right, so we've got this mask. Um, ah, now this won't be necessary. So I'm just going to circle select. And I'm going to hit dissolve, X to delete, dissolve. And then I can grab these points, push them a little better into place. All right, now with, with concept sketches, I don't tend to be very exact because they are rough. So normally I'd do an inks pass on this, um, but I kind of like the sketchiness of it. With my mask now done, um, oh, I'll just uh, stop to answer a question. Do you animate per frame or with rigging? Um, <laughs> it was way too easy to duplicate. Uh, yes, uh, do I... Uh, a bit of both. It depends on the type of animation. Rigging does facilitate the project. This is mainly illustration, so I won't really jump into animation. Uh, so sorry about that, um, because rigging is a little bit more complex and it's another layer. But uh, basically, you can set up a rig on a 2D figure, and it sort of does like a pup. Uh, I think in After Effects, it used to be called Puppet Warp, where uh, you use the rig and it sort of moves groups of vertices, much like you would use a rig to move a mesh. Uh, and so, yes, you can rig 2D um, characters with um, an actual rigging setup if you wanted to. The other way, of course, is frame by frame. So if you're more a traditional animator, uh, and it's how I've been doing my storyboards for the Eat Sheet project that's also coming up, um, I like to draw. And you see here that I've got my... Um, I'm just going to indicate my timeline here, 
I'm on frame one. I'm basically only drawing on frame one, but you do have a timeline. And if I was to move ahead in the timeline and redraw one of these shapes, you get frame by frame animation. Um, grease pencil isn't great with tweening, if you know what that is. And that's where you sort of can draw two keyframes and get everything to interpolate it. It's good with shapes because they have a fin finite amount of points. Okay. Um, but uh, with drawings, frame by frame animation or the more traditional version of animation is generally the way I would go, but that's just me. Um, so yeah, look, it, it just opens up possibilities. All right, now I've got my mask. I'm going to get some colors in. So uh, I'm gonna lock off my mask layer. Now, if I make my mask invisible, here's something that's really interesting. It won't work. Um, you need to have it visible, but you can drop the opacity and untick use lights if necessary. So it goes to zero. Um, not entirely sure why this is, uh, so I'm gonna have to look into that, but I'm gonna add another layer and I'm gonna call this, um, let's just call it colors. Lock off my mask, right? And here, on this little dot here, I can go use mask. There's another way of doing it. And that's down here where it says masks. I'm just gonna um, unfurl this little window here. If I tick this, you'll see that the mask icon shows up. Right, so on this colors layer, it says a mask will be enabled. And now just like with layers, I can add from our existing layers, any layer that we've already created. And so here I'm going to add the mask layer and it's mask is visible and I'm not going to invert it. It's normal, but you can do an inverted mask. Uh, you'll see what I mean in a second. So I'm just going to uh, bring that down. We've got masks on that colors and let's color this monster. We'll start with maybe like a sort of a mid brown. Now, if I go ahead and just draw outside this shape, bang. See what happened? The mask is filled, right? Now, why does this come in handy? Well, first off, I can draw very, very easily. Now, if I take this mask off, you see the outline is there. But if I put that mask on, you know, it cookie cuts it out. Why did I do it this way? Well, this means that I can then take, say, this darker tone and draw in these objects here, right? and not be too precious about it, right? Because on the outline, these are sticking out, but the mask, right? <laughs> yes, that's exactly right, <laughs> Blanche. Uh, it's like being able to color inside the lines all the time. <laughs> that's correct. Uh, so yeah, so I'm just gonna uh, go ahead. Now, uh, I'm just using this sketch as a reference for this uh, sort of a crackly, effect. Oh yes, by the way, has anyone decided on claws? Should I go with sharp claws to go with his spikes uh, or the little digging flat claws just for a little bit of cuteness? Uh, I, th I think both could work, but um, one, I I'm not sure if, if it would make too much sense or, or bad sense or, or anything like that. All right, so I'm just going to go ahead and, and color in here. Now take this color, this is going to be our bone color and our eye ball color. Right. There, there. All right. Um, I may need to add another color here. Little ones. Little ones? Flat claws. Okay, someone's called it. I'm going to go with the flat claws. Yep, why not? <laughs> All right, I'm gonna go back to my pencil to refine here real quick and jump into my pencil black and we're gonna go with the flat claws. So he looks like he hasn't cut his nails in some time. And obviously on the thumb, it's necessary. Let's just erase point. And we'll go with 
claws there. We definitely see it more on the back side. So let's go. Yep. Ah, two votes for flat ones. All right. Yeah, look, I think it'll still work, but you can sort of see the logic behind it, you know? Um, he's a spiky character, or he's got bits of spike, but he's also got these very flat, stony-type looking patterns all over him as well. Uh, so, okay, I'm going to go back to this and get in a bit of this color. Oh, no, I want to go to my ink pen, solid fill, brown color there. Was that? No, that's, that's the wrong color. Okay, I've made a mistake with the color. There's an easy fix uh, that I'm going to show you here. I'm going to go to edit mode. I'm going to select, shift select, shift select, and hit L to get those linked um, areas of color. They're on the same layer. Okay, now I'm going to go into vertex paint. I'm going to make sure that vertex paint is set onto the points there. Probably like one of those ogres from the... Yes, that's exactly right. <laughs> and now I'm going to select the different color. And with vertex paint, I'm just going to paint over. And lo and behold, uh, actually, I'm going to get that strength right to 100%. The color is fixed. Now I can go back into draw mode. Uh, and knowing that uh, I'm back in the right color. And I can get these. Now, stroke has got stabilize on. Okay, cool. I'm going to take stabilize off so I can get a little bit more rough on this. Stabilize is awesome for inking. Um, but sometimes when you want to do some really rough stuff, right? Because, you know, your hand tends to wobble a little bit. How are we for time? Okay, 20 minutes. Okay, let's speed things up here. See if we can get this monster designed. Nail, actually, should the nails be the, I think the nails should, <sighs> now I'm torn. The nails can be, ah, now we've got a mask to edit here. The nails could be the same color as the spikes and the teeth since they're probably made of the same stuff. Or they could be, um, more like the patterning on the back so and so like either way i guess it would work i might go with the pattern uh literally just going to say that they remind me of ogre now <laughs> yes <laughs> and ogres are cute aren't they um yeah so i think i might go with the color of the the, the whole rocky patterning on the back. Right. Now, what I wanted to do is, obviously this, I can spend hours just drawing these patterns, so I'm just gonna speed this along a little, so we're not here forever. Um, because there is something else that I wanted to do. Right, so you can sort of see how that patterning works. And with our pencils here, I'm going to set my eraser to erase stroke. And this just makes it way easier because as I go over that stroke, just have to be careful around the edges because it then, then will ruin an edge, right? Uh, we can take away the stroke outlines, right? Not all of them, but some of them. And then that patterning looks a little bit nicer. Yeah, looks a little... Uh, more, I don't know. Okay, so we're gonna need that patterning. Okay, I'm gonna bracket down to make my eraser. Uh, see, see I, I just erased a really important line there. So you gotta be really <laughs> a bit careful with the erase stroke, especially if you don't wanna ruin any other lines. So we'll go back to our grease pencil. So, sorry, not grease pencil, what's it called? Uh, our Pencil red, which is set to black. Uh, okay, so I'm really liking that. Same color as the spikes and teeth. Well, we can change that, as we know. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'll just fill this... Uh, that's right, we haven't got a mask there, so I'll go edit the mask again. 
which is fine. I'm going to edit here, bring that mask down. There we go. Ah, hang on, we'll need them over here as well. So editing the mask simultaneously edits uh, the color layer because the color is keying off the mask. Okay, how are we for time? Okay, we've got about 15 minutes. Oop. Right. So, yes, you said uh, same color as spikes and teeth. Could always define a construction line layer, just hide it instead. Yes, yes, that's, that's doable. Um, so, eyes and teeth. Let's go to ink, solid fill, uh, this one here. Let's get the spikes up. Oh, no, we're drawing on the wrong layer. Who hasn't done that before? Okay, so that's there. And uh, let's just see what it looks like on the front. Hey, you know what? I think you're right. Um, hmm. What do you think? Eyes and teeth or stony skin pattern? Hmm. Is there a way to deactivate brushes from layers? I always have the problem when I draw on the wrong layer and yeah, you lock it. Okay, uh, there's this little lock key. You might have noticed me. So I tend to only have the one active because yeah, otherwise. <laughs> yeah, um, I, I lock them and then I'll unlock them so that I can uh, draw on them. Right, now remember what I said about the uh, underbelly here. So let's see, is this the color that I wanted to fill? I think I want a slightly similar color to this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this color and I'm going to brighten it up a little. Maybe desaturate it a little. That should be nice. Okay. And I'll just add this to my palette. Let's see what the, yeah, that's, eh, it's a little warm. Uh, we need it a little bit more in the yellow brown. Is that good? Yes, okay, cool. I can just drag and drop that on this swatch and now that's saved, okay? Um, and now what I wanted to do was I wanted to get this kind of underbelly softness in there and then sort of do a reverse um, patterning but in this color. So I'm gonna choose that color and do this. See what I'm saying? So like it looks like this pattern is continued and edges into the other area. It's a neat little 2D trick. And with, I can go right in there if I need to. And you just make it as asymmetric as possible. Right. And uh, that is looking way cooler. Okay. How are we for time? Are we, are we good for time? I think we've got about 10 minutes. Yep. Feel free to ask any questions uh, that you might uh, be thinking of as I sort of finish off uh, these patterns. Now, I, um, I'm i not sure I'm sold on these claws being this color exactly. Um, I might have to take the power of veto here and, and, and go with the other ones, just because they seem to match the skin a little better. Uh, like, I could, I could be wrong. I could be wrong. It'd be sort of more my preference. <laughs> Vertex. Here we go. So I'm just going to fill those in. Hello. Why aren't you filling in? Interesting. 
interesting. Okay, might just have to uh, erase you. No, uh, edit. No. Oh, nothing's been drawn there. That's what. Solid fill. Bang. There we go. Back to the darker. That's right. Great. Okay, so he's looking good. Now, I'm going to do, uh, in the last 10 minutes or, oh, in the last 10 minutes or so that I've got, I'm going to add another layer, and I'm going to call this shading. Now, my preference for shading. Um, I'm also going to add that mask, right? Go mask layer. So now the shading will also take that on. When I'm doing concepts, and I just need to do it rough, you can just work with black and white, right? So if I say, take this black tone here, and I drop the opacity of the shading right down to say maybe a 150, right? This is a really quick and nasty way. Okay, actually it might have to be a little bit more. Let's go half so you can sort of see what happens, right? This is a really quick and nasty way to get shadows in there, right? And so you can start to draw in some shaded areas, whatever, and also works for the reverse. I'm gonna add white to our... The other way that I do it is I, I like to stay on the regular here and have this quite high, but not too high, right? And I'm just gonna delete all my shading. I'm just going to edit mode, select all, and let's delete all points. And so we can just start fresh, right? And I like to paint in colors. Yes, you can do a blending layer. Um, uh, the, the blending modes are limited. Uh, so usually the blending layer that works best in say Krita or Photoshop or any of those is like an overlay, uh, or you can use add for highlights, multiply for shadows. Um, and using blacks and whites is quick and nasty. But if you go with this method, it takes a little color theory, right? So we want shadows that are warm. Let's bump this into say the red tones here. So it's not exactly this, um, but if we then play around with say a warmer tone, and you know, it could take some time to get right, okay? We get something that looks a lot, okay, it won't work on that, right? But we get something that looks a lot nicer because you're shading using a color, right? You're not shading just using plain blacks and whites. Uh, and then we can sort of get some of these colors in here. Maybe that's a little too bright, right? Uh, I can also go to say just my, my blacks here, bump up the radius of my pencil quite high. Hello, there's the white. Okay, and you know what? I want a nice sort of sunlit highlight. So I'm gonna go with this yellow here, right? And I can draw in a highlight edge. This is sort of really good for things like, you know, things like that. And so you can still paint. Uh, that might have to go, uh, I'm just gonna add that so I don't lose it. Okay, so on the lighter value objects, it works a lot better, right? But on the darker value objects, you might want to consider using something like that, right? Now, these lines are obviously a little dark and they're starting to look a little muddy because we're starting to paint with some colors in here Right, um, I'm just gonna go into solid fill for a moment and get in a nice big block of color here. There we go. Right, you can sort of start seeing how it adds dimension to this, this monster, right? And that's all on one layer. I tend to just work on one layer. But then what we can do is instead of using the vertex paint mode, there's another mode 
here right on the layers menu. So I'm just gonna bring this right up so we can see everything. So I save my work. And that's tint color. Now, if I select a tint color, that's a little bit more, say, reddish orange. Let, let, let's go with that. And now I can up that factor. I can now color those lines, right? And just adjust that layer. And this works on a per layer basis, right? Similarly, if I wanted to say, uh, have I got, yeah, I've got five minutes. I can show you a different technique. Let's say I wanted to affect the overall um, layer of this. Uh, I can go to uh, effects and I can go to, uh, actually, let's, let's try modifier tint, right? Uh, stroke and fill. Let's have a bit of fun and just do the fill for now. And uh, we can, you know, make him a little bit bluer, right? And you can play around with the strength of that tint. But you'll notice that because I set this just to fill, anything that is stroked, I'm just gonna go straight up to 100% strength, so it's just all the fills are now blue. But the pencil lines, they're strokes, and these highlights that are strokes, they're also strokes, they're not going to be affected. But if I switch this over to, similarly, opposite stroke, or stroke and fill, now it affects the whole thing. So this is a really handy, um, uh, little uh, modifier. Um, and now, uh, one thing that you can also do with modifiers is the modifiers have an influence. Okay, you can select a layer or even just one of your materials or even a vertex group to have that modifier effect. However, effects don't have that. All right, so let's say we added something similar. Let's say we added a glow effect over everything. Uh, we're gonna go glow under, and we're gonna make this a uh, bit of a, a reddish glow. I'm gonna have to bump these right up. Okay, uh, we're gonna go 100, 100. Can we see that? Oh, it's sort of there. Actually, if we go glow on top, add, let's go color. Right, this glow, Ah, oh, we can even select a color, interesting. So if we just make that invisible and select the color we want to glow, let's say, let's say it's the, uh, the teethy thing here, right? Ah, oh, interesting, okay. Yep, boy, I've not used this one in a while. <laughs> we can sort of get a bit of an anime glow, a little bit of one in there. Right, this reason I added that is this doesn't allow you to do an influence, right? So the effect is over the entire grease pencil object, whereas the modifier can be over the entire grease pencil object, or it can be per layer, material, vertex group, what have you. I'll take that glow off, it's really ugly. Uh, <laughs> and I'll just take that tint off for a second. So, let's see now. We've got a couple more minutes. I might just quickly finish this uh, this backside uh, version. So, in under shading. Uh, let's say he flipped around. Similar lighting. Uh, solid fill. Oh, actually, no. Uh, let, let's say that the light, uh, lighting was on this side. Okay, and we can make this a little bit bolder. darker tone here. Yep. Right. And basically that is how I create a quick concept design. Um, I'm liking this monster. I think this is the monster that I am going to pitch to Wes. So, you know, obviously the last thing we want to do is say put this concept you know, nice and center there. 
do a, a quick rendering. Oh, that the effect is there, obviously. Um, and then, you know, I can save out this image and uh, I can sort of say, hey, where's, what do you think of this guy? Um, this is the monster that I'm going to come up with. Uh, and uh, yeah, then we can sort of go ahead and do other things, uh, such as, I'll just do a quick thing until Amber says that I have to leave, because I think this is only going to go for an hour. Uh, let's go to draw, red pencil, red here. Um, you know, now it's ready for sculpting. Yes, <laughs> that's right. Um, but then, you know, the, the last thing I would do after this is draw a few, you know, poses. So let's see, what does he look like when he's smiling? All right. And because I've got all those features there to, to look at, I can very quickly draw in some Uh, sketches to show what he might look like in, say, this pose. All right, we've got some teeth here, or maybe he's sulking. All right, so we need a frowny face. Eyes can be, you know, I am not impressed. <laughs> All right. Uh, and because I've chosen these features now, it should be fairly easy to come up with some real quick sketches to sort of show what he would look like in various poses, or maybe screaming, that sort of thing. You, you get the idea, right? Uh, and, and this would help as well, because this is the other thing. So it's, let's say we send this concept off to the client, boss or whatever, and he likes it then it's a good idea to get onto these things. But, you know, just sketching a few of these would possibly even uh, better sell it uh, to them say, okay, look, if he's scared, he looks like this. Or if we need him to look cute, he can look like this. We need a tongue in there and that sort of tonsil thing. Right. Uh, and, and that is really good to have in there. Gonna lasso select these, maybe scale them down a little bit, maybe stick them here. Let's take a look through the camera. Uh, yeah, let's put it there, and we'll just reposition it ever so slightly. Yep. Right, so that when we then render, uh, we should get have something a little bit more complete to send to the boss. And uh, yeah, look, we're a little over time, but uh, thank you for joining me in this live stream, guys. Um, yeah, it's been fun. This will be archived, of course, so you can uh, watch back later uh, and all that sort of stuff. And yes, look out for panels. It should be... Uh, look, in the last quarter of this year, uh, I can sort of promise that, and I'm hard at work on that, and this little monster will feature in that. Short but sweet stream, <laughs> yes. Thanks very much. So, good to go, Amber. Um, just gonna ask there. Oh yes, I really, really hope it is. <laughs> right, so let's go with the end of the stream here. Yay.